It is me, Mike Vanderpool. I'm here today, director of the Heart of the Lions fan documentary, hanging out with Rick Chafee. Rick Chafee is a Lions fan who I met through Twitter. Um, a very demonstrable Lions fan, to say the least. <laughs> Uh, I feel bad, Rick. You know, you uh, do the the run around the the yard with the flags after the Lions' victories, and that one day it was raining, and and you said, "Well, I don't know if I should do it." And I, I feel like I encouraged you a little bit, and you went outside, and your flag broke. So I feel like I I feel like I uh, I screwed you up a little bit there. But um, you, you took one for the team, and it's it's pretty cool to see like for a fan base that's been dying for uh, some hope. And some positive stuff like to see you just embrace it and, and take it on and own it and just love it so that's that's pretty awesome so today here just to kind of get to know you a little bit more and um talk about you know how you became a lions fan and, and uh and, and why you're still here today waving that flag uh, and i think actually the week after i broke that flag i broke my michigan flag Maybe it's a good sign. <laughs> After the win over Ohio State, it was raining again, right. and I broke my I broke my Michigan flag to say, just the next week. Right on. Um, just, I mean, never one really becomes a Lions fan. If you're born and raised in Michigan, you're you grow into it. You're just that's what's bred in you. You're you grow up a Lions fan. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a small town in Michigan. Just uh, about an hour north of Lansing. And that's what we did on Sundays was the big console TV where you had to get up and turn the channel. Yep. And that's what when, we did. We when, the kid, when, when, when us kids were the remote controls, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's why we had to sit in the middle of my dad and the TV. So I can crawl up right. the TV and clunk, 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 turn the channel. Right on. Do you remember any of your first games watching them? I was born in 70. So okay. I guess when I really started remembering watch or paying attention, it was like around 79, 80. I think it was roughly 67 to 72 was our last winning season as a head for a head coach before Caldwell, mm. Joe Schmidt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but when I really first was starting to really understand the game was 80s. Early, early 80s, 81, 82. Right on. You know, into the Eddie Murray. <laughs> then getting into the Wayne Fonts era. I remember some of the names from when I was a kid because we're roughly, you know, I'm a few, few years uh, uh, away from you in age. But um, I, I, I don't remember anything really until like 91 personally. Okay. I mean, that's. Yeah, I'm back uh, around 82, I think. That's really. right, right when on. I was about 10, 12 years, 12 years old. Is when I really started. You know, my first jersey was Gary Danielson. Nice, <laughs> very nice. Then, it, then it was Eddie Murray. So you're. It sounds like your whole family was Lions fans, from your dad up to your grandparents and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. My dad got me watching it, and I don't remember if you remember uh, last month when I dedicated the flag run to my my father who passed away. Mm -hmm. And now I think he's up there leading the leading leading the charge. That's um, awesome. Yeah, it was just it was me and my dad watching football every Sunday, every yeah. Lions Sunday, watching football, watching football. It's just something you did <laughs> growing up in Michigan. It, you know, sitting in the house, snowed in, watching the Lions. Right on. And and like, what did you do? Um, you know, any traditions around watching the game? What do you remember? Mom making a big tray of snacks, and my grandmother because my grandparents were always at the house. So we're at my grandparents' house. They live right next door to us. Mm -hmm. So it was me and my dad, my grandfather, and my mom, my grandma were always making big tray of snacks and bringing them into us while we sat there and watched the game. <laughs> and it was always miserable because <laughs> we're always on the losing end. <laughs> well, it wasn't always miserable, right? There had to be some good memories in there from 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 the games. Well, yeah, there's a few here and there <laughs> until we got into the you know the Wayne Fonts era. Yeah. But even then, he was kind of a 500 coach, but he still won game under 500 all of them all of them years as Lions coach. I but, yeah, uh, he, still feel like we kind of underperformed with the talent that we had back at that time, right? I mean, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, from you know Billy Sims, you know, to all the way up, you know, Gary Daniels, Eric Hipple, hmm. <laughs> we had them all. Yeah, I guess when we were kind of blessed with kickers for 30 years, <laughs> well, with Eddie Murray and Jason Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and then even right with you know recently, oh geez, why can't I think of the guy? 
Why can't I think of a guy we got from Denver that went to Arizona? I'm terrible with names. This was sucks. It just po- it just flew my yeah, head. Yeah, too. exactly, exactly. It, it'll pop my, back up soon enough. Um, now, what about currently? How are you? Uh, how are you watching the games these days? My wife hates me to say it, but uh, Direct TV. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got to have my game day. You know, yeah, got to have it. my extra and, innings. Yep, all of it. And what kind of? Um, traditions do you have at home watching either you know any of the regular games or thanksgiving games I and mean, anything anything special that you do are you super superstitious i guess i should ask i am i really am uh and my wife more so than i am oh she's a lions fan too well she's married into it oh right on right she's on. she's and she's a jaguars fan because she's from the jacksonville area mm-hmm so she kind of watches both. So she's kind of happy right now because Jack's doing pretty well too. Yeah. But um, and she's more superstitious than me. I'm just more or less, I'm by myself. Don't bother me. <laughs> People try to call me on Sundays and I'm, I'm like, why are you calling me on Sundays during a game? Because you're hitting block. I'm getting blocked, blocked, blocked. Don't, don't call <laughs> me. Just leave me alone. Let me do my thing. And that's uh, basically my Sundays. Right on. Thanksgiving, not so much. I don't have a lot of family down here. I got my two kids down here, my oldest kids. Um, I live down here, Miss. I'm, I'm in Long Beach, Mississippi. Oh, right on. Okay, that yeah. that that's why the the weather looks a little bit better down there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I graduated in 1989, and uh, the Navy Seabees called me and say, hey, and I joined. Did uh, 21 years. Retired oh, wow. in 2010. Awesome. And thank my, you for your my, service. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. My two oldest kids were still in high school. And I didn't want to pull them out of high school to pack up and move somewhere. Right. And then they graduated in 2013, 2015. And I'm like, man, I'm getting older. I'm starting to like this weather down here. So <laughs> right. Here I hear I still am. Very nice. Yeah. I was actually at Ford Field today. I, I purchased some, uh, uh, some Lions gear for Christmas for the family. That's my extent of buying Lions gear is when I'm home on vacation is going to Meyer. Or Walmart, <laughs> right, right on, and raiding and raiding the shelves. <laughs> right on. So you still have family up here then in Michigan? Yeah, I've got a uh, my mom, my sister, and my dad. Oh, my dad wasn't Shepherd. Right. So my mom, and my sister, my, and my two my two sisters and my mom are still up in Michigan. So, so what do they think about your uh, post game activities? <laughs> my sisters don't kind of really pay attention, but um, my mom loves it. Awesome. That I that I stay true to my team that was awesome when did, when did you start so for if you don't know at home um rick uh post game post victory uh uh has a lion's flag and runs not just in your yard but out in the street and, and kind of neighbor's just, yard <laughs> just, mm-hmm. just celebrating the victory uh how did that start man how long how long has that been going on because i've only picked it up here recently this started about five years ago oh wow three five years ago and I started doing it on my own, just run up and down the street screaming <laughs> and my wife would record it, but it, we, it would just go to like Facebook, you know, something. And my wife is trying to get me bigger. So okay. she started, she started going to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, right. and, and recently posted a few to Reddit on the right line sub on Reddit. Right on. And uh, I think there's one I did last Sunday is that 20.6 thousand views oh wow dude that's awesome yeah and last week was seventeen thousand, so it's climbed up even this week yeah have her um uh make sure she's posting some of his youtube shorts too you'll, you'll probably get some decent traction from youtube shorts Twitter, yeah i saw yeah. she sent me one yesterday that uh lions cast or lions something yeah. one of the lions podcast they do and uh they show me a picture of you know they show me a little clip of me running around my yard nice very nice last year i was on detroit news stations twice they did a big lions fan and there was like they picked the three top lions fans and they showed my video of me running but i think my famous one last year was on fox pregame terry bradshaw Said, look at this guy. There are two games. One and look at him running. Run up down it. So it's yeah, Terry Bradshaw. Nice. Showed dude. my clip. Yeah, that's some that's some street cred, dude. What I do uh, after the game, my my uh Rick's recollections. Have you seen right those? On. Yes. Yep. 
Uh, like, yeah. I've, I, I've only seen the one that I think the most recent one that you did. Yeah, I do my flag run. Then later on that afternoon, when I finally calm down, I, I do my Rick's recollections, my just little recap, little re- my my recap. And, you know, lowly Michigan boy doing my right recap. On. Lions fans, I think, are enjoying – most of them are enjoying social media and Twitter right now. There's still some Lions fans who will never be happy no matter what happens, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the um, one on – time to fire coaches now. That one, that group. Uh, the same old Lions uh, group. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I got to admit it, Rick. I was early, early this season. I was kind of right there too, man. I'm just, it's so hard, right? It's so hard to keep bought in this whole time, which is amazing. You know, five years, that flag still was kind of pretty new until, until this year, right? Well, usually I've only had to use it like two or three times a year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't don't take it out of the plastic. <laughs> yeah. But so and this so, one, I, and I've got a brand new, one, but I'm just, I'm, Oh, you don't, don't. Not no, breaking no, no, it out. No, 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 no. You keep that one under wraps. <laughs> this one zip tied to the pose, the pole, and then yeah. Yeah. So what's going on? Um, you know, just just this season has been really, really incredible. I mean, it is truthfully the highs and lows of being a Lions fan here within f- freaking 10 weeks, right? It's almost like our entire lifetime has been encapsulated here. I mean, what was your what were your thoughts early on this season with the way we, hard did you watch hard knocks? I did. I so did. hard hard knocks, I think, had most of us kind of hyped up, ready to go, right? Uh, oh, it had all America hyped up. Yeah, everybody was ready to buy into the Lions like they're buying in now, and then they kind of lay some eggs. Yeah, <laughs> as we always do. <laughs> well, um, and of course we all, you know, we all drink the Kool Aid at the beginning of the season, preseason, seeing, oh, we signed this guy. Okay, look at this draft pick, and oh, yeah. Dan Campbell's got this. Then we jump out the gates and yeah, let's go, and we're one and six. Yeah. Then this things turn, and next thing you know, we're going six and one. And well, people are buying into his culture. Dan Campbell. I mean, Dan Campbell bleeds Detroit, blue collar. You know, and it's it's awesome. It's just awesome to see. And, and going to work and, and and getting the shit kicked out of you some days and just going back the next day and doing your job, right? I mean, that's yep. you can see that across the entire team. Like, yeah, I've never seen a team, a Lions team, this just like bought in and, and connected and embracing that old that who uh uh what three two one on or family on three. Like yeah, every one of them that's- believes it when they say it. That's amazing. And when they gave it the game ball to uh, DJ Chark, I think he started it. You know, he said, I've been over on that side for four or five years, and this is a family. Yeah. And and yesterday or Sunday with uh, Khalif Raymond. Yeah. And Ooh. again, he's same thing. Family. It's all about family. And it's all. And Dan Campbell gets so emotional in his speeches, you know, almost to tears. And yeah. that's just, it just shows his passion. He he's an emotional guy, and I think he's just he's a big dude. Like that, mm. there's, I mean, he could still probably play today, right? And, oh, and yeah. I think and I think some of that, um, some of what he says, and some of the emotion, and some of that just bigness. I think some people were kind of seeing him a little as being a little silly, right? But I don't yeah, know with that. all the you know the the helmet on and yeah. the kneecap thing, and but you really. Just- you really listen to him, and the, I mean, he's 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 smart. He knows what he's doing. He he believes what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. It's, and it's awesome to feel like as a Lions fan. Uh, well, David that, Phipp, right David Phipp, they interviewed him the other day, special teams coach. Yeah, I didn't see that and, one. But... And he said, he says Dan Campbell is so smart as a coach. He's I couldn't imagine working under anybody else than Dan Campbell. Nice. He says he's amazing. He's so football smart. It's ridiculous. Well, and and I know that I saw a video. Uh, 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 oh, geez, McVeigh. They were interviewing and talking to McVeigh. Some interview I saw last year where McVeigh kind of had this almost photographic memory of plays from from throughout his entire career. Right. Well, they asked they asked somebody asked Dan Campbell the question. I think this week about that uh, uh, fourth and. Oh, geez. What was it? The field goal kick of the field of the 54 yard field goal, right? Something mm-hmm. that we had done previously, but he said, you know, I regret that yada, yada. And, and he does it again. And I think he was, he was asked about that, but he was able to explain what that situation was and what this situation was and what the difference was at a level that I love that my coach is thinking like that. I like, j- that's just awesome to see. And you yeah. don't get a lot, you don't get a lot of that because the biting kneecap stuff is more, more fun for everybody to talk about, I guess. Yeah. We're going to stay, a, stay afloat. 
until we punch you again and we're going to float back to the top and punch you again. Yeah. And the, just, the, what is it? The the one ass cheat quote, I think is still one of, one of his best. That was my wife's fantasy <laughs> team's name. Oh, was it? <laughs> That's yeah. great. One ass cheek, three toes. <laughs> that, that is that is great. That is great. Yep. So when's, uh, when's the last time you've been to a Lions game? Wow. I can't even remember. Um, have you been to one at Ford field? No. Oh, wow. No, I have not. I'm, you know, I'm down here in my military career. A lot of times I was overseas in Okinawa or, you know, deployed all the time, most of the during the season. So yeah, never had a chance to make it up there. Well, well, well I think, um, you know, I, I, I don't know how, how many people of the Lions organization uh, like me, but uh, I'll, I'll see if I'll, I'll see what I can do to, at least spread oh, the word a, that you there's some people well, out there who want to see you on the field man oh a lot of the fam on twitter they're yeah, like it's awesome new year's day this guy has to be there i, I think another, so dude and another guy says imagine if you could run that flag at lion stadium after the yeah. game yeah it is that's I, but it's, I, I, I see a lot of the twitter folks that are buying into this saying wow you need to be at a lions game yeah you know well you know and it, it's just one of those things like this fan base and and i only know the lions fandom i don't you know because I, I i'm not a steelers fan i'm not a a, a, a bills fan right I, I can imagine every i can imagine a lot of fan bases are similar to what the lions are and that's cool because what the lions fan base is is just freaking awesome dude like the the, the fact that these people hang out like they do at eastern market um, which is, you know, Detroit here where, where a lot of the tailgating happens and, and just the amount of people who are just embracing fans who are here and enjoying what's going on is awesome. And for, and for you to, you know, start getting some, some uh, publicity here and cred on this is, is, is cool too, because like you're genuine, dude, I can tell, like you go out there, you're not running out there for the likes, right? I mean, that, that, no, that's not what you're no. doing, dude. And, mm -hmm. and, and that is the one thing any Lions fan who's been a Lions fan for longer than, than six weeks is road tested. You know, we've, I mean, I don't know about you, but I still watch games sometimes kind of like not cheering at times. Cause I'm like, okay, I'm still, I'm still a little shell shocked here. Um, pardon the phrase, but. Um, or not, and maybe even shell shocked, but like when they brought out Joseph the other day or that field goal kicker to kick that 58 yarder. Yeah. You just something sank in my heart. I says, with one second left, I said, this guy's going to make it. A la Justin Tucker last year. After the delay of game, they didn't count. And yeah. Just, just, you just know as Lions fans, something's going to happen to crush you. But what's interesting, it's Rick, is it's, it's happening to the other teams now. Like, we're not the – what what used to happen – you know, my phrase, Lions going to Lions, is happening to mm -hmm. other teams now. Like, Jets – they and I can I can't remember all the details because there's too much in life to try to remember, but you know with their penalties and with with the missed field goal at the end, um, I think the tide's turning, man. Because even at the end of that Jets game with this, that whole Jets game for as close as it was, I felt like I I just felt different. I personally felt like different watching it than I've ever had before. And it's the Lions aren't giving up in the fourth quarter. It's like they kick into a whole new gear. Yeah like the sacks, the pressure, they start hitting, you know, it's like, uh, uh this ain't going to happen to us now. And all the national media, media, media outlets, the ESPN, what have you, this and this and this, they're all saying this ain't the same old lines. And they're not going to, they're not going to back down. They're going to, and the stuff that used to happen to them is not happening to them anymore. What were the uh, power rankings that came out today? Wasn't, Colin Cowherd were like number nine, and then somebody else I saw were like number seven. It's it's just so amazing, just the run we're on. You know, it really is. It's incredible. Yeah, after um, all we've been through. And I had a Cleveland fan come on yesterday to my, on my Twitter. He says, "Man, he says, I feel you. We've all been through it, same as you guys. When we're still going through it, he's we're glad for you." A yeah. lot of Green Bay fans are saying, we're glad for you. We're happy for you. Minnesota fans, we love what you're doing. We love your coach. It's just good to see everybody talking about the Lions. Because the Lions are doing it the right way. Yep. They're doing it the right way, man. You build a solid core. You build an offensive line that can push people around. You put, you put quality guys in positions to win, both at the coaching level and at the player level. 
um, you buy in together and, 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 and cool things can happen. I think that's, you know, that's the city of Detroit. That's, that's Michigan itself. That's the Midwest, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, lunch pail. Exactly. And you know, when it really turned around was when they let go of Aubrey Pleasant, believe it or not. Yeah. And I don't know too much about Andy, the scuttlebutt about anything that happened there. And, but, you know, I guess sometimes the wake up call for that people needed, was it, but, but those the, first five games, our defense, defensive backs were getting killed. Yeah. Then all of a sudden we fire a defense or defensive backs coach. And all of a sudden <laughs> just something turns. And I mean, Anthony Glenn's Anthony Lynn's Glenn, Aaron Glenn, his Aaron, yep. defense is just, Oh, wow. Wow. I mean, it's not great, but it's hungry. They they're doing a lot better job of containing, right? They used to over pursue all yeah. the time. I mean, they've they've done a, a much better job of containing. Which I'm in, I'm excited to see um, what what this uh, uh, game against Fields uh, it looks like. I mean, I think we can we should be able to really limit Justin Fields. I think because we've got him on tape, we've got enough on tape and experience with running quarterbacks. What we've played like four. We had Jalen Hurts. We had um, first game of the season, which. I mean, think about early in the season we were losing games. Uh, we only lost to Philadelphia. We, we were in My that first, game. Yeah, yeah. the yeah, Bills. The whole like, game. like the this Bills. team is this team is freaking good, dude. This team could very easily be freaking twelve and five. Josh Josh Allen's very mobile. Yeah. Yeah. Justin yeah, Fields. Yeah, true that. Jalen Hurts. I mean, we've even Trevor Lawrence. The kid yeah. gets moving. He, you know, he can. And because I'm just so used to the past where we can't contain a running quarterback. Yeah. And they chew us up for hundreds of yards. We'll stop the running backs, but we can't stop the quarterback. I mean, as much as Aaron Rodgers used to kill us with his arm, he he did a heck of a lot of damage with his feet, especially on third downs. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's old man Aaron Rodgers, you know, yeah, still yeah. running on us. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how you feel about Aaron Rodgers, but, um, Oh, I hope that I hope that last game of the, the season it's him, and I hope we beat him. I hope we beat him bad on his own field, dude. I don't even I care mean, about beating is, him bad. Is, I, win win by half a point, half a point if we can. I don't care. Beat what does man. every Lions fan think of Aaron, Aaron Rodgers? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope we sack him like seven times, <laughs> exactly, and just hurt him, exactly. Just because I think I really got a bad feeling. This it's going to come down to that last game. I mean, Green Bay's got a tough schedule going out. And even Aaron Rodgers got that little dig on us last night Yeah. at the end of the game. He yeah. said, what are you going to do? Your last three games are above 500 teams. He said, oh, no, one is just 500. I said, okay, I got you. But you know what, though, dude? What's interesting? He – when has he ever had to pay know what the Lions record is in December before? Right. Right. Like, we are in the heads of everybody, and it's awesome. It's so awesome. And all the media outlets says, okay, what happens if we make the playoffs? We're going to have to go to Minnesota our first game. Is that and how it's like, up? Yeah. And everybody's like, Minnesota does not want to play Detroit their first game. No. You know? Because we should have beat Minnesota our first time. Yeah. And then we did the second time. Well, and I'm sorry, because I derailed you earlier, and so I'm going to try to derail you again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the, the decisions that were made with Aubrey Pleasant and then Hawkinson, my initial reaction, I'm, I got to be honest, it was, was back to SOL. I was just like, dude, the same. Why are we firing coaches? Why are we letting them? But every move that they're making, Brad Holmes, they're all working, dude. They're like, everything's working from who he drafts, from how they just personnel moves. Like, man, this is scary good for a, 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 a GM and a head coach who are what you're two. I thought we were done when we traded Hawkinson. I really did. But then after the trade, our next, what, four or five touchdowns were all tight ends. Tight ends, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just, just blow. Then to hear TJ Hawkinson say, I'm glad to be in a place where there's winning. I'm like, oh, wow, really? Okay. And yeah. here we are. We're the ones that winning. Yeah. Then we go to Minnesota and we beat them. Yeah. Yeah, what was that? The next game, we had three touchdowns to, to the three different tight ends, wasn't it? So it was like, it was just almost like a, Hey, F you, we, we put anybody in your position and do well. Look at Brock Wright last weekend, <laughs> yeah. rumbling down 51 yards. Yeah. That was great. Well, 
you know, it's interesting. Um, ben Johnson is getting a lot of good uh, publicity right now. Um, it will be interesting if 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 he ends up with a, a head coaching position, uh, how the future looks. But right now, you know what? I I, I don't even, I don't want to think about that. I don't Maybe even really want to think about anything beyond getting one playoff game. You know what I mean? Um, heck, I don't even. You know what? If if I look back to the beginning of the season, and I know certain situations make you change your mind about stuff, but beginning of the season, I didn't give the Lions a real chance to make the playoffs. Yeah, everybody did. Nobody did. We all figured about six, seven wins, maybe. Yeah. If if that. So right now, it's it's house. We're playing with house money, and mm-hmm. I've been a miserable, piss ass Lions fan for way too long. I'm just gonna we enjoy this. Have. Yeah, I'm just gonna enjoy this though. You know what? Let's let let's just be let's just be uh crackyola crack man and just you know enjoy the moment and then we'll next week we got you just just live that life while we can here the rest of the season. I mean, Dan Campbell says that after every win, he's okay. We're one to zero. Yeah, let's wait for the next weekend. Yeah, yeah. And they and that's all all the lines they think that it's we're one to zero. Let next weekend's next weekend. Yeah, we got a favorable schedule, but. But any given Sunday, man. I mean that that's yeah. that's the NFL, right? I mean, that is the NFL. Look at last weekend. Vikings down thirty three to nothing at halftime. And we were all, I think, all Lions fans were just ready to take the division at that point, right? We were like, yeah, we, we were yeah. like, we broke Minnesota, we're going to win the division. Yeah, <laughs> we we labeled them as frauds. Yeah, we nailed them. And uh, any given Sunday, you're right. Yeah, with with what I mean, because that game, I don't, I didn't watch all of it, but I, I think the Taylor injury had to play something into that. Jonathan Taylor going down, yeah. You know, Minnesota can't write the, can't run the balls, or Indianapolis can't run the balls effectively. But only to score three points the whole second half. That's yeah, that. yeah. When you can put up thirty three in one half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, and Kirk so, Cousins ain't that great of a quarterback. You know, um, how you feel? How you feeling about golf right now? End of last year, I'm thinking, okay, bridge quarterback. The beginning of this year, I'm thinking, okay, bridge quarterback. But then all of a sudden, we get all of our receivers back healthy. Mm -hmm. Our running backs, everything on offense is clicking, and golf has just been unstoppable. He just looks so comfortable. It's like the Lions have finally – they're buying into golf. You know what I mean? They're making golf family. Like, hey, you're our guy. Yeah. And I think golf is more comfortable knowing he's not just a bridge quarterback anymore. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to imagine that whole trade thing had to hit him in a spot that you know, just, just messes with you a little bit. Right. Just, just that just whole. Floor, kinda, yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, I mean, yeah. And, and we're giving him time. We've got tons, tons. Dude, the lines are freaking loaded, dude. This is we ridiculous. Are. Yeah. I mean, we don't, they're not just Lions good. Like our offensive, our entire offense is freaking NFL good. I'll yeah. say it. I mean, our receivers, you know, with Chark and Reynolds and, and um, Amonra, that's he, three. Then that's why it's not a problem bringing JMO back slowly. Yeah. Cause we're all like, oh, JMO, JMO, JMO. Then, okay, we're breaking them in easy, breaking them in easy. We don't need them right now. And cause we got so many other receivers. I'd like to, you know what I'd like to see? I want to see uh, JMO and and um, Amon Ra in a double reverse. Just just find a way to get the ball into into JMO's hands and just let him run that'd from be behind crazy. the line. You know what I'm saying? Just like that'd be crazy. Yeah, because he's got such ridiculous speed. And, and if we can block right, load up all the tight ends on one side, just block the entire side, and just let him bolt. And there's been so many surprises, like you know, uh, James what Houston. James Houston, where'd he come from? Five sacks later, four games and five sacks later, and yeah. here he is. I mean, the Lions, the Lions rookies have 13 sacks this year. That's crazy. Uh, but that, that again, that's Brett Holmes. Yeah. I, 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 he, I, I diamonds in the rough. I was a doubter on Brett Holmes when we're losing. I was hating everybody. But, dude, it's just all coming together. Everyone. I mean, even, you know, the, the, the game balls that were given out recently, Khalif, you brought up Khalif and Shark. Um, Khalif's been doing a solid job for this team for what two years now? Three years? Second year, yeah. Three years. Second year. I don't know. Probably second year. I, I can't. Second remember. year. Yeah. yeah. Second year. Uh, but you know, from 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 Matt returning, Brad brought him in. Yep. From returning kicks to 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 filling in for when our receiving core gets banged up, he's been reliable. He's been fairly consistent. And, Dan Campbell and, said he's our Iron Man. 
Yeah. And and this week, I mean, you, right when we don't make fourth and one first play of the game, <laughs> your, your, your brain as a Lions fan is instinctively going one direction because that's just how you were raised. <laughs> and then for our defense to come up and stop it and, and Raymond to run that back, dude, that's just, and, we don't get, a lot, we don't get I, a lot of those. I'm beginning to understand Dan Campbell. He's a go for it guy. You know, he's, so fourth and one on the two, I was okay with it. I'll say, if we don't get it, okay, they're going to be pinned deep. Yep. And sure enough, our defense stepped up and their punter was kicking from, you know, he had nine yards to plant and kick. And that's when Khalif got that and just ran it back untouched. It was great. It was just like, wow, wow. Is this Lions are doing this? It was just amazing. Just, yeah, get that blue Kool-Aid pump into your veins. Lion, lion's luck definitely feels like it's changing that or has changed no, it, it, it's beyond that lion, lion lions aren't just learning to win anymore either i don't i'm stealing this from somebody i heard today uh lions are winning now they they, they know how and they're doing it which is which is phenomenal dude dan campbell said that in a post-game meeting with his team the other day yeah. he so says you, we know we know how to win we win games so how much like how much are you like watching invested in all this lion stuff? Because it's everywhere, right? Like the press conferences every day and and all the Twitter stuff and everything else. I mean, you got a nine to five though, so you can't be on it all the time. Oh, my my Twitter notifications going off all day. <laughs> Is there a- I got I got I got a cool boss. He lets me oh. do my. He's he's never there. I ru- I run the job <laughs> site, so he's never there. So Very I do nice. my thing, and yeah, it's great. I, I just I love it. Right. Matter of so fact, you- yesterday when I was talking to you, I was at work. Right on. <laughs> So yeah, right on. Yeah, this Sunday. It, no, we play this Saturday. Saturday. This Saturday. So, um, uh, I'm supposed to go to my sister's for Christmas and then to church. But I think Jesus might understand if I if I stay home and watch the Lions. Right. So yeah, and when I when I finally realized it was Saturday it was yesterday. Yeah. Because my 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 son is my son's in the Navy now. And he's coming home on leave. And my daughter will be here. My kid, my I have my kids here all Sunday morning. I'm like, wow, we got to get these people shut up when my lions come on. <laughs> then I look, right. I said, wait, wait, they're Christmas Eve. I'll be home by myself. I'm good. Come <laughs> nice. on with it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So, so um, do you, are your kids lions fans? Mm-hmm. Right on. They are like hardcore, well, just cat, like what kind of. Did they, as, through, not, did they inherit not, the, the flag running <laughs> gene? Not as hardcore as me. I think my youngest son, my 12 year old, yeah, he, he's all about go lines, go lines, go lines. Nice. And my mom still lives in Michigan. So every year for Christmas, he gets a bunch of lions gear. Nice. You know, mom sends me lions gear and, uh, yeah. So I get, it's my youngest son, my oldest son, not so much. He's kind of okay. Football. He's more of an Atlanta Braves fan, baseball. Right on. My daughter, she watches it for fantasy football. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice, nice. And she said, and she's dead. Honestly, when I get into like thirty seconds of your video, I turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> well, you know, we're, we're just a different generation, man. But all, but all Lions fans. So that's that's cool, dude. That's cool. I mean, that was um, my son's getting there with sitting and watching games. He he just has too much energy. He can't sit. He can't sit still, right? Like when the weather was a little bit better, playing outside at halftime helped. Um, and he can make it maybe a quarter of a game before he's got to go run off and do something else. But uh, I picked up a Hutchinson jersey for both him and my middle child, my daughter, who uh, um, she looks good in blue. And I think she wants to be a Lions fan. She just doesn't good isn't isn't fully bought into all of football yet. She likes the Lions, but like watching football isn't just her thing. But we were planting those seeds over here. Yeah, too. I kept the Twitter Lions fam. I kind of kept them in the loop when I was getting my new jersey. And right. I asked them, I said, what should, should, should it be Rodrigo or Hutchinson? You know, who's it going to be? Then there, some guys were guessing Houston. I'm like, that's a good call. But no, not Houston. And then my wife surprised me that Kirby Joseph jersey. And yeah, like, that's yes. awesome, dude. So I love Kirby Joseph. Love that's awesome. him. That's For awesome. a third round pick. I mean, he's, he's, I mean, he's in the pro, you know, fan pick for Pro Bowl. That's that's awesome as a rookie, a Lions dude, rookie no less. <laughs> dude, we have so many rookies. So like, it's a ridiculous. Like, I don't know what they're all producing. They're all producing. 
Well, yeah. other than Chase Lucas and but I mean for we got five of them, right? At least three on defense, two on I don't know. I can't remember. I don't even want to try to think. Mostly um, defense. Yeah. I mean Rodrigo, Hutchinson, uh Houston. Kirby. Okay, so three, four. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So they're all on defense. Chase Lucas. Yeah. Because we only really have Jameson off offense, right? Oh, uh, James Mitch, the tight end. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. But he then, you know, he injured late last year, so he really hasn't played much, but yeah. Yeah. James Mitch. Hmm. Very cool, very cool. Well, uh, it's, it's, I think, I don't know, Rick, is there anything else you want to, we could probably talk forever um, and enjoy this, <laughs> right. this Lions moment. Um, but uh, uh, anything else that, that you want to talk about, um, about being a Lions fan or uh, what, 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 what's the most, best part about being a lions fan for you right now right now yeah. oh just of course the streak we're on and the, the way everybody has bought into the lions that we're finally relevant relevant mm-hmm. we're not you know the we're, we're playing meaningful football in december and you just usually by december all lions fans are talking about the draft not even caring about the rest of the season but now we're relevant and everybody's talking about the lions in December. It's, it's, it's just an awesome time to be a lions fan. And for all the years that I went through, you know, with the Wayne fonts and then the coaches after Wayne fonts, Oh my goodness. It wasn't even somewhat normal till we got Jim Caldwell. Then the whole Patricia phase. And, and I think they finally got it right with this guy. I really do. He played for the lions he knows it. He knows the city. He knows the people, how hardworking these people are, you know, the blue collar lunch pail. And that's what he brought to the team. And the team is embracing the city. The city is embracing the team, as we always have. Well, and I hear the 12th time's a charm, too. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're right. The, the, the litany of coaches, man, it's been a minute. <laughs> we, could, we, could, we could go down that list and it'd take a while to get through it for sure. Uh, well, yeah, like I said, J- Joe Schmidt was the last winning quarterback before Jim Caldwell, and coach? that was six. Coach before yeah. Caldwell, yeah, that's wild. and that was six. That was sixty-seven to seventy-two. As he was coach, was we never had a winning coach until Jim Caldwell. Well, and that's the other thing too. And any young folks out there who who think you might be Lions fans, you need to watch this and enjoy this because this may be a once in a freaking lifetime experience. <laughs> I mean, all it's people been... know about the Lions is we had Barry Sanders and Calvin Johnson retire early because they were tired of losing, you know? And that's and we had a quarterback that lived and died for the city, Matt Stafford, and we traded him. I said, well, it was more or less of a mutual trade. We're going to go through a rebuild, and they basically asked Matt, hey, do you want to go through a rebuild or you want to go somewhere else? So Brad called up his buddies in LA and now we're sitting at look at what number four pick this year, it, <laughs> next it, year in the draft for Matt Stafford for what we got for him. I mean, it's, 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 it's working out for everybody. Right. Yeah. Yep. The, 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 the funny thing is, um, so I follow a lot, a lot of lambs, lambs, folks, Rams folks on Twitter because of, uh, Stafford and, and all of last year. And, uh, the, the Rams fans were, were really mad because of how the referees mistreated them against green Bay. And I was like, yeah, y'all don't you even guys know. have no idea <laughs> exactly dude <laughs> i'm like here buy my la lions gear and, and just join us for the rest of the season we did we, we did it for you <laughs> i mean let's go back to the playoff game against dallas when they threw a pass interference on Pettigrew and they oh oh there was no pass interference come on yeah, man. you know yeah. we know about it don't give me your crap that, about referees <laughs> I, that that was a that was a government conspiracy i have proof mm-hmm. <laughs> i have proof good <laughs> Uh, all right, Rick. Well, um, I don't know, dude, it's just a pleasure, pleasure talking to you and, and hearing more about your story and everything else like that. And I will, uh, make sure that as I wrap up this video and, and, and do all the edits and everything, I'll make sure that you're whatever you want, like for hashtag your Twitter, um, and in the description, I'll make sure you get it's link gets linked and shared appropriately. So I just okay. appreciate talking to you, dude. It's awesome meeting you. Um, and excited to see uh, what the rest of the season holds for us. So thank you. It was, it was a pleasure to have me have me on. It really was. It was great. I yeah. love it. Cool, cool. Always up to talk Lions fans. All right. Take care, everybody. Appreciate it, Mike. Thank you. Yep, yep. yep. Have a good one.